So I found something that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it's like people don't have to be held for accountable for their actions anymore at all. So found that at the Pulse Club shooting in Orlando a few years ago, that the police officer was sued uh, two years later by survivors for not doing enough to stop the shooter. And he engaged in the shooter twice to to try to stop what had happened. The man who, man, T- Mateen, who did the shooting, he killed 49 people and injured 53 others. Uh, the morning, the, the family sued sued the club which was called the pulse google facebook twitter uh the gunman's employer and his wife and one of the the victim's families one of the victim's surviving family members said that the reason why they were suing was because you can't sue gun manufacturers and somebody has to be held accountable for what has happened here I don't understand. That doesn't make no sense to me because I'm responsible for what I do. And then you go to Las Vegas a couple years ago where the Route 91 Harvest Harvest Music Festival was. There was 58 people that died, 450 victims suing the owners of Mandalay Bay and Resort. And then in Tennessee last year, you had a gunman who killed four people at a Waffle House in 2018. Victims' families, I guess it was two years ago. Victims' families sued the suspect's father for negligence and the city for recklessness. Now the city's getting sued for recklessness because they sent first responders to the wrong Waffle House like nine or ten miles away. But to sue the father, that's not, that's not the father's fault. You know, Remington just recently filed bankruptcy because of the Sandy Hook shootings and they were allowed to have been sued for somebody else's actions with one of their products. So basically what that allows is, is I make knives as a hobby and if I sell a knife and somebody stabs somebody else with it, then I'm, I'm, I'm liable for that. And that's not once, once that product leaves my hands, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be held liable for it anymore. I I didn't I didn't raise these people. I didn't teach them their morals. I didn't teach them right from wrong. It's not it's not my responsibility. My thought on the on the subject is is maybe if we if we put more arms in people's hands and gave people more of a, a proper way to to defend themselves then then such actions wouldn't wouldn't occur. And they'd be less likely to occur. And if they did occur and when they do occur, they would be stopped a lot quicker. And and we have a prime example of the church shooting and white settlement for that. You know, that, that shooting was over very quickly and it was because there was good people that were armed in the building to put a stop to it. You know, it's not the gun's fault. The gun doesn't pull the trigger. You know, it's not my fault that that person did it. It's, you know, it's not my fault if somebody cuts themselves with a knife, it's, you know, so, so, I mean, to say that means if, if somebody goes and buys an orange from Walmart and throws it, throws it out in, into this highway over here and hits, hits one of these cars over here with it and they can't, they can't find the suspect or the suspect is killed being apprehended, then Walmart's liable for that. Look, Walmart's Walmart could be liable for any of those damages, and that, that that logic there's there's no there's no grounds there's no moral grounds for that type of logic. That's that's an unjust, that's that's or, or or unjust. That is that is unjust. These people shouldn't be the the people that are being sued and held liable for these other people's actions are the wrong people. They're they're not the ones responsible for this. Uh, I mean, you got one of the greatest arms manufacturers in in the world that's filing bankruptcy over somebody misusing their product, and I don't understand how they're responsible for it. They, I mean, did they sell it directly to the man? Even even so, once once that man had it in his possession, he's responsible for his actions with it with it outside of that, and you know. <clears throat> We've forgotten that one of the sole foundations of this country is our God-given right to defend ourselves. 
and and we're allowing that to be taken away and it's been taken away little by little by little you know the the first gun law was passed in the mid 1800s by georgia to banish you know handguns and it was found un unconstitutional and done away with and then 1865 with the emancipation act they passed certain laws that stop people of color from from owning firearms you know and and any any law that's written against the second amendment is is an infringement of that amendment people have the right to protect themselves they have the right to protect their property you know that's that's one of the that's one of the the ground principles that this country is found on and we shouldn't just stand by and allow people to take that we have the right to protect ourselves you know we have the right to militias and we have the right to arms there's there's no reason why there should be regulations on arms there's enough good people in this country that if you were to arm them they would stop evil from happening they would put their lives on the line to stop it from happening and it's been it's been shown that that'll happen over and over again that whenever good people are armed they stop bad things from happening to to innocent people you know there's there's real people that that are patriots in this country that that realize that it's it's our duty as as fit men of this country to to protect and that that's what we've been called to do is to protect those around us you take our way of protecting there's going to be less likely of protecting the innocent around us because we're going to be more likely to be shot and killed ourselves and that's not right nobody should ever be in a situation where if they have a gun or a knife pulled on them that they don't have the ability to to protect themselves or to stop the situation by any means. You know, I happen to be lucky enough to live in a hold your ground state. Uh, I happen to be to be lucky enough to live in a in a hold your ground state, which <clears throat> which means I don't have to back up. I have the right to defend myself. Uh, you know, it's nice knowing that. It's nice knowing that if somebody comes into my home. I can treat it as, as if they have one intention. And, and I firmly believe that if somebody comes into my home that they only have one intention. It's it's not right for these manufacturers to be getting sued like this. Uh, it opens up a whole a whole can of worms of other people being sued for, for things that they're not responsible for and that they shouldn't be liable for. It, it changes and, and opens a, a whole door to, to things that shouldn't be and that are that are unjust, as I said earlier. And if it's unjust, then it's unconstitutional. You know, that's not <clears throat> those those gun manufacturers didn't didn't manufacture those guns with the intentions of of hurting innocent people here at our homes. You know, they, they sold those for for hunting or for self-defense reasons <clears throat> and for an individual to take that and use that for an evil doing and then for a separate party to be held responsible for for that person's actions that's wrong that's that's not right that, that should not be tolerated that that shouldn't be allowed it shouldn't be stood for that's that's not what that's not what we're about uh, you know another thing is the red flag laws you know those those are you know Trump Trump went back and forth on those a few years ago and and that's you know that's scary that's those those laws are you know basically all somebody has to do is just say that they think you're a threat then they can come into your home and take all your ways of, of self-protection away from you and then you have to prove you have to prove your innocence and that's that's not just either that's very unjust that's very biased uh, you know there's there's counts of, of times when there was no gun laws in place of judges only having you know having very low very low murder a very low number of murder cases come across their desk uh, you know it just the the data shows that but you know not basically but the data shows that safety by gun control is a hoax and and that's all it is is a hoax it's it's a way to it's it's a it's a play on words for disarming the people 
and that's all that it's ever been and that's all that it's going to be and until until you give people the right to be able to to defend themselves and to be able to arm themselves and stop these situations they're going to continue to happen you know criminals don't obtain guns the legal way some of them do and it's just because they haven't been charged but if you have good civilians with arms in their hands they you know it's it's common sense it's common sense we entrust we we entrust a whole group of people to be armed and to protect people you know and and we just you know we we're supposed to just trust that they're good and they have bad seeds they have bad seeds and and you know look the city's burning to the ground over it you know i mean it's it's unjust for for this to be happening and I don't understand how any judge could could even begin to fathom that it would be constitutional to to allow somebody to sue a manufacturer for the way that their product was used. Uh, sorry, my arms are getting tired from holding this phone out. Get my hand out the way there. Uh, you know, it's just it's ridiculous. It it's it's stupid. It's stupid. If we just would hold people accountable for their actions, then, you know, a whole bunch of this dumb shit would go away. But it doesn't. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to deal about it the way that it needs to be dealt with because then people are going to have to admit that they were wrong. And then people are going to lose power. They're going to lose that power that they have, and that's what they're scared of the most. They're scared of losing that power. You know, and you see everywhere all over the country that more and more people's rights are being infringed every day. That, you know, you have governors acting like dictators. You got mayors acting like dictators. You have them backing terrorist organizations and people, you know, just being told, oh, well, you're going to have to deal with it. And and instead of doing what is right and what is just and what is godly and what is what is our God given right and allowing us to arm ourselves and defend what is ours, we, you know, the, the people are being told that they just have to stand by and allow it to happen that's you know that's got to stop somebody's got to stand up and put a stop to that there there has to there has to come a point when we're tired of it and and we don't allow it to happen anymore and and you know my question is is when are we going to do it gun gun sales in june were at a record they were up like 134 percent all the way across the nation and the question is, is are the people who bought those guns, are they ready to use them? Are they, are they ready to, to exercise their rights and, and put a stop to certain things? Or are they going to continue to sit by and, you know, continue to be, to be the sheep? Because just because you go out and buy protection doesn't mean that if they put a mandatory buyback in place or a mandatory turn in that you aren't going to comply and be a sheep and go hand your arms and your way of protection over. You know, it's just, I kind of feel like these riots and this looting should, should kind of wake people up to the right to defend themselves. And it seems to be doing the opposite to a mass group of people. I mean, you got people all over the country that are getting charged with defending themselves. You know, there's a pregnant woman that was trying to leave a situation that, that is getting charged with a felony for, because over, over something petty over something petty that she wasn't allowed to leave the situation over and that's that's a bunch of bullshit you know since since when can a pregnant woman defend herself in this country since when when has that become the norm when does that become the okay is that the new normal is that what we're supposed to expect is that pregnant women can't defend themselves they can't protect themselves and their unborn babies i i i, I refuse i refuse to accept that and and we we as the people of this this great country we should refuse to accept that it's it's a bunch of bullshit it's a bunch of hogwash and it's a bunch of snake oil the the whole gun control the whole safety by gun control it's a bunch of bs and if you go and you look up the numbers you'll see that it is you'll see that that the cities that have the highest gun control are the deadliest cities to live in and you'll see that the places that have the loosest gun control that those are the safest places to live in and it's because the city and the the armed citizens don't just stand by and allow stupid things to happen they step up and they stop it it's just something to think on you know it's something studying that i've run across something that i you know that's been weighing on me that doesn't it's not right you know we we the people we we have the rights to defend ourselves, you know, and, and you guys got to remember that disobedience to tyrants is obedience to God. You have to, you have to peaceably disobey, 
you know, don't, don't go out and look for a fight, but definitely don't come in out, you know, don't, definitely don't come out on the wrong end of one by any means, you know, and these people are trying to take our rights away to defend ourselves and we can't stand by and allow it to happen. We have to, we have to stand up and we have to stop it. I mean, at some point, cause we're getting ready to lose it. We're getting ready to lose it all. I mean, everything they're even, they're even starting to censor news. They're starting to censor speech and we, we have to put a stop to this. We can't, we can't continue to allow this to happen because once it's lost, it's gone guys. It's, it's gone. It's completely gone. You know, and, and, the, you know, the thing is, is, is I see, I see all these churches closing down. I see, I see all these people that, that are, you know, proclaiming, oh, I'm a believer. And then, and then I see that their churches are closing down and that these people aren't doing anything that, that they're just, they're just complying. And, and, you know, something I have to say to that is, is, you know, the apostles, they were, they were all persecuted. They, they were, they were all persecuted to death. They, you know, they, they all died spreading the word and worshiping and you guys are just standing by. I don't, I don't, I don't think that that's the way that it was meant to be. I think, I think that my faith tells me the, to stand up and, and shout the name from the rooftop, no matter what, no matter what the consequences are going to be and no matter what they're going to do to me. Paul spent much of his time underneath the prison. He spent it inside of a very nasty, dark place in the prisons where, where he wrote much of the New Testament from. He didn't stop. He didn't stop. He was waiting to be, to be tried and, and persecuted. And, and he continued, you know, he, he continued even after he was locked up and knew what the inevitable was, knew that he was going to die for his beliefs. He still continued to write epistles and, and to spread the good word to people. You know, I'll tell you this, if the church is closed down in my city or if they ever, if they ever put, a, put an order out in my state where people can't sing when they're at church, by all means, you're more than welcome to come to my house and we'll all gather out in the front yard and we'll sing as loud as we can because that's our right that's our god-given right and as christians we should all stand up for it and we shouldn't allow them to tell us that we can't do this no religion should allow them to tell them to do this there shouldn't be any restrictions on this there's no reason why churches can't be open right now there's absolutely no reason if you if you have health problems or if you're afraid of it then protect yourself from it and it's been said over and over again, you know, we're letting we're letting a very small group of people dictate how how we live and what our rights are. And that's never what this country has been about. You know, it's it's a shame. You guys are allowing governors to tell you how you can worship. You're you're having governors that are putting you guys in situations that you can't go to church. You can't be around like minded people. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. When are we going to stand up? You know, I read a story of a church up in New York, Grace Baptist Church. They're being attacked. They're having kids that are being attacked from going to church. You know, that's that's what we should be doing. That's we should be going to church like that. No matter what, you know, no, no matter what. We shouldn't ever be silenced or allow anybody to silence to silence us or stop us from spreading our beliefs. We were called to do three things whenever we came to came to the Spirit. <clears throat> that was repent, be baptized, and then minister. You take my freedom of speech away, I can't minister. You can try to stop me from ministering, but I ain't going to stop. I ain't going to stop spreading a good word. And I know several other good men that are the same way. It ain't going to matter what you do to us. We ain't going to stop. We're not going to be silenced. And that's how all of us should be. If if at any time now, this is when we should all be out in the streets spreading the word, praying for people and praying with people, trying to get people to, to see the light, trying to help them see the light, trying to be conduits for these people. That's just, you know, it. I'm confounded at why people just sit back and allow this to happen. And, and allow people to, to just violate and take our rights like this. We have the right to assemble and we have the right to, to exercise our religion. It's very clearly stated in our rights, guys. And we shouldn't ever be afraid, you know. And if you call yourself a Christian, you know, you got to remember the Lord cast out all fear. And whenever I see churches closing, it makes me feel like that that church is full of fear.
if you have the Lord on your side and you know you're protected by him, why are you scared of a virus? Why are you scared of a dictatorial governor? Because I'm not. I'm not scared of it. I'll stand up for my rights. I'll, I'll be a criminal whenever my rights become, you know, whenever, whenever the Constitution becomes illegal. <clears throat> you know, our rights were given to us by God, not by government. And our Second Amendment was given to us to protect these rights. And, and our rights are, they're, they're infringed, they're in violation, and nobody's doing anything, nobody's standing up to them. There's a very small, small, small number of people that are. Most people are, oh, I'll just have church at home, I'll just have, I'll just have church on video. Great, great, good, good. Where's, uh, where's the accountability in that? Where, where's your accountability? There is none. There is none. You can't truly cast your burden on your brother through through a video. I mean, you can some of it, but there are some conversations that need to be having in person. You know, we have strength in numbers, and it shows over and over again throughout history. There's strength in prayer. I mean, are they, they going to arrest us all? Is that what they're going to do? You scared to go to jail over your faith? They're not going to kill you over it. <laughs> not yet, anyway. It's getting there. But none of y'all want to talk about that. None of y'all want to deal with that. Y'all just want to sit back and conform and allow this to happen. You just want to be a sheep. You know, Peter was told to feed the sheep. You know, we're called to stand out. As, as godly men, we're called to stand out. We're called to be separate from people. We're, it's, I mean, it's in scripture. We're to proclaim it from the rooftop with all conviction. We, we are, we are to, you know, we are to not be stopped. We are to continue no matter what is, what is going to happen to us. This, this is, you know, this is supposed to be our right. And, you know, when, when a right is, when, when a right is infringed upon, we, you know, we are, we are supposed to, as Americans, supposed to continue to exercise that right. I mean, not just as being a Christian. I mean, any, any religion that you are, whether it be Jewish, Muslim, uh, Hindu, Buddhist, or whatever, you, you should, you should enact your First Amendment right and continue to exercise your religion and your right to peaceably assemble. There should never, ever be a law that is written against or for religion. And it's so that religion can stay neutral in all things. There's a lot of, a lot of the founding of this, this country was completely founded off of a God and Christian principle base. But we shouldn't ever cower. We shouldn't ever cower away. There's too many times in scripture that show us what happens whenever we stand up to bad. You know, look at Daniel. You know, look what Daniel went through. Look what David went through. You know, David David committed many sins and he went through hardships. He came out a changed man. Paul. Paul came out a changed man. And yet there's so many that cower. There's so many that run. Do you believe or not? I mean, I've run from it too long. I've run from it for so long that I can't do it anymore. And I'm not going to do it anymore. I've been quiet on things too long. And I have too much to say. I have too much that needs to be heard. I see too many people that are saying one thing and acting another. And saying, oh, it's okay. And then using scripture to justify why it's okay. And it's not okay. It is, it is never okay to be like this, guys. It's never, it's never okay to not congregate. There's no reason for it. There's no justifiable reason for it. I mean, ever, ever. If anything, it's, it's time now for us to get together and pray in mass in, in great numbers. But people don't want to get together to do it. People are too scared what's going to happen to them. I don't know. It seems like that there's a lot of people that are taking that that are choosing and picking the road that is wide. <clears throat> I won't do it anymore. 
I can't do it anymore. There's too much at risk. There's there's way too much at risk for everybody. I mean, not just us Christians, but but everyone. And and the sad thing is, is it's it's Christians that seem to be being singled out the most in it. And and no, you know. I feel like I'm rambling on and repeating a bunch of things. It's just, it's baffling to me. It's confounding. I can't seem to find any, any, any big numbers of people that are standing up against this. I mean, what are, what are you guys going to do whenever they tell you, oh, you got to give us your Bibles, and then they, they take them downtown to your, to your city square, and then they pile them all up, and they pour diesel on them, and they light them all on fire, and they tell you, you can't talk about this anymore. What are you guys going to do then? Are you guys just going to sit by idly and conform and, and wait and say, oh, it's just, it's just going to, you know, it's all going to work out. We're, we're told to follow. We're told to follow this. No. No, that's not, that's not what we're told to do. It's not what we're told to do at all. It's far from it. And we sure as hell ain't called to be comfortable. Not by any means. Nowhere by any means we're called to be hot or cold. Too many of y'all become comfortable. Too many of y'all become complacent. Me, myself, I'm guilty of it. And it's gotta stop. We we gotta we gotta start making ourselves uncomfortable and putting ourselves out there, guys. We we gotta we gotta start being the ones, the ones that start standing up and stepping up into these roles that God has called us to step up into. And until we do that, this is gonna continue to happen. I mean, we have to fight. We have to fight for for our homes. We have to fight for our families spiritually just as much as physically you know this is a spiritual warfare that's going on in this country just as much as it is a physical warfare and cowering down isn't the answer to it you know we weren't descended from fearful men none of us were as as americans or as christians none of us were were descended from fearful men you know many many times we've you know we have been persecuted throughout history and this is just another one of those times and we're just sitting by idly allowing it to happen and I can't, I got, I got kids that, you know, that, that I, I can't just sit back and allow them to grow up in a country like that. I can't just sit back and, and allow them to think that it's okay for, for somebody to tell them, oh, you have to do it like this, or you have to do it like this. You know, we, we have to stop allowing us to be told what to think. You know, we have to stop that. We have to start educating ourselves on things. We have to start making our own decisions on things and stop just believing every single thing that is put in front of us. We have to wake up. We have to wisen up. We have to open our eyes up to what is going on around us. <laughs> and everybody is too scared to do it. Everybody is too scared to speak out because they, you know, they might be shamed for it. Well, I'll stick out. I'll be shamed for it. I don't care. I don't care anymore. It's 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 a shame that not not more people than what's doing it are doing it is what the shame is. You guys should be ashamed of it. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. You should be convicted of it. You should be convicted of it, not ashamed. I don't think ashamed's the right word. You should be convicted of it. Because if you're convicted of it, then you'll be made feel guilty of it. And maybe you'll get up and do something. Maybe. What happens whenever these people come in and tell us that we can't pray publicly? You can't talk about God publicly. You can't talk about Jesus publicly. You can't, you can't talk about scripture publicly. They're already telling us that we can't go to church. I mean, it's there. It's happening. It's happening and nobody is willing to do anything. You know, the whole ban on singing in California, every single church out there should have choir practice every day, every single day. And they should climb in that church and they should get up on that stage and it should sing filled with the Holy Spirit the entire night. I 
I don't know, maybe people are praying for the wrong thing. Maybe people aren't praying at all. Maybe it's because people's face aren't where it's supposed to be that their prayers aren't being heard at all. You know, there's so many people that still think that you wash the outside and you're clean on the inside and that it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It never has. That's just a show. That's just a show. And anybody that has called themselves a Christian that is allowing themselves to be silenced, that is be allowing themselves to be told that they can't practice their religion, it's a show. It was a show. I know several men that are very upset that their churches have closed. They don't understand, and they feel the same way. They, they, they don't understand why people are scared. They don't understand why, why people are running from it. It's a shame to see that America doesn't have a backbone anymore. All over a little bit of fear. I mean, you gonna stay in a bubble your whole life? I won't. I won't. I won't. Not at all. Not at all. They put travel restrictions on. I have the free to move. I mean, The emergency orders, the ability for these these governors, these dictators to have these emergency order powers is unconstitutional. And and they're using it to take our rights away from us. And they're not just using it as an emergency order for a temporary deal. They're passing permanent laws with it. And nobody's seeing that. Everybody's okay with it. They're saying that this is just temporary. And it's not just temporary. It's, I mean, guys, come on. It's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to open your eyes and see what's going on around you. Because this isn't temporary. They're, they're saying everywhere it's the new norm. I mean, they always get people with media first and make you comfortable with it. Get you used to the idea. The new norm. The new norm everywhere. Everywhere on commercials, on TV shows, on ads. News stations are saying it. I mean, come on, guys. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Because it's, it's about to be gone. And it's about to be gone forever. And if we're going to get it back once it's gone, it's going to take bloodshed. And we, we don't want that. Nobody wants that. And the only way that we're going to obtain it is if we learn our rights and we exercise our rights and we stand up for our rights. Yeah, they can, they can arrest you and take you to jail for it, but there are civil rights attorneys all over this country that are picking up cases for free for people exercising their rights during these orders and that are being arrested for it. You know, they put a, they put a mask order here in, in, in the city that I live in and in the state that I live in. And, you know, I just tell them at Walmart whenever I go in there that I got, I got medical conditions. And, you know, I had an instance the other day where I go in there and everybody's staring at me like you got the plague. And it's because I'm not a sheep. I'm not a sheep. I see it for what it is. I'm smart enough to educate myself. I'm smart enough to do some research on it. And then I have another employee that walks up to me and harasses me about it again. And then I have several customers that harass me out into the parking lot. I don't know if some of y'all ain't picked up a history book. But I have. I know what it is. I know to call a spade a spade. And I also know if the shoe fits, you lace that bitch up and you wear it. It ain't nothing but propaganda to turn people on people. It's all it is. Who's going to comply and who's going to conform and who's who's not? It's it's a singling out process is what it is. They only want the ones that are going to conform. 
they don't they don't want us that are that are going to stand up and exercise our rights and it's you know it's pertinent that we do it now it's more important than ever guys we're about to lose our right to religion we're about to lose our religion in this country and people are just sitting by and letting it happen they're they're already re-educating people on things they're already i mean it's it's happening the the communism act is is occurring as as i'm speaking and nobody cares there's a bunch of people talking about caring and you know what are they doing they're wearing masks whenever they go out in public they're not going to church they're being quiet and by being quiet i mean you know i'm not seeing much action behind it from people there's very few people that i see that are complaining about it that i personally know that are that are being defiant over it and that's what we all need to do. We need to be defiant. We need to be like this church that's up in great, you know, up in New York that is going to church no matter what. That's how we should all be. We should all be like that. It's saddening. You know, it really is. It's saddening because there's some people that that's, you know, that's the only fellowship that they have. Some people don't have the means to to get around all the time to go meet and gather with like-minded people. And that's been taken away from those people. From my understanding, what California has done is geared just towards Christian churches. That's unjust. It's a violation of the First Amendment altogether, but it's unjust because it's singling somebody out. It's singling a group of people out. It's bringing back segregation laws, you know, except for the segregation is by religion. You know, people have to wake up and stop thinking that, that your rights are just things that the government grants you because the, that's far from it that is that is far from it the the rights that are written down those were you know those those are rights that that are given to you at birth by god and the government will try to take those from you they are taking them from us you know so my question is 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 how many it's a horrible light how many men are willing to stand up for this how many men are going to say that I'm not going to take this how many how many men are are going to go out into the street and continue to spread the word and continue to pray with people and continue to try to reach people and minister how many of y'all are going to continue to be disciples throughout this because you know my experience in ministry is you have to go out into the communities can't do it from home can't do it from home not the way that we were called to do it you can't there's no way there ain't no way that you can do that from home how am i going to meet the same amount of people and talk to the same amount of people sitting in my house scrolling on facebook scrolling on instagram you know scrolling on twitter as opposed to taking my bible and going out to the streets and walking up to people and talking to them you're not. You're not. And they've taken that from us. They've taken that from us. You know, they've, they've taken the ability of us to be able to take somebody that's new to faith or somebody that doesn't quite know what they believe and needs to experience it and to get different points of views of people and be able to sit down with people that have different experiences so that they can relate to. They've taken that away. And that's an important part. That is a very important part to our faith and our foundation. That, that being able to, to be able to rate, relate to somebody to, to be able to, to see, hey, I'm not the only one. This person's been saved too. What I've done ain't as bad as theirs or what I've done is the same as theirs. <clears throat> you know, we're, we should be in the business of helping God save souls. And this lockdown has stopped us from being able to do it and us just following along with it that's 
that's against everything of what us Christian men and godly men are called to be, the roles that we, we have called to stand into. You know, there's been many times throughout history that Christians have had to run in fear. There's still parts of the world that it's going on in right now. need to hold accountable who who is you know who is reliable for things that have happened and that goes for these lawsuits or these mass shootings that I personally feel like are unjust and unconstitutional and just people in general you know we need to hold people accountable we, we need to hold the right people accountable is what we need to do and you know we're attacking you know this nation is attacking the wrong people for it if they would go after the people that were accountable for it that were reliable for it the ones that were behind it some things might change some things might change people would open their eyes up and stop believing most of the mainstream media a lot of things would change. People would unite then. We would be united. We would be a united nation. We'd be what we're supposed to be. But until then, we're going to let these men that, uh, you know, claim to have our best interests at heart just run this country into the ground. And then most people are going to be a sheep and they're going to comply and they're going to conform. And they're not going to go out and they're not going to spread the word. And, you know, they're going to put their little mask on. And, you know, they're going to go sit down and have supper six feet away from the family that's next to them. And then, you know, they're going to have their service over the video. They're not, you know. That's not going to be personal anymore. People aren't really going to feel that love anymore that they're supposed to feel. And that's a major part of it. That's probably the most important part of it is people feeling love. And we can't do that. Being told that we have to stay in our homes or that we can't go to church or that, you know, I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. It's just got me, it's, it's got me, you know, It's got me worried about a lot of things. Because I'm seeing my freedoms being taken from me. And it doesn't really seem like that there's many people around me that are willing to stop it. It seems like pretty much everybody around me just wants to stay silent. And let it happen. And I can't do it anymore. So... Sorry, it's a long video, guys. It's a real long video.